Hello, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, December 20th. December. Good Lord. There I go again. January. I don't know why I am so stuck in December, guys. <laughs> Spirit says there's still a lot of clearing that's happening as uh, uh, associated with December. Okay, that's fine. But with that said, this is going to be for two for yeah, Tuesday, January 22nd. There it is. 2019. Yeah. So this is a general energy reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, and even though it is dated for the 22nd of January, that does not mean it's something that has you have to be going through today. Um, this is just what spirit wants to talk about at this moment. And I'm tidying, I'm, I'm, I'm making it chronological. I'm dating it so that, you know, there's distinction. Um, and also I'm titling it, but whatevs. This is the message that's coming through on the 22nd. All right? So take what resonates, please, and leave what doesn't. Um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. I am also on Facebook now um, at divine conversations 2711. Go ahead and give me a like there if you like. Yeah? So let's get into the energies for today and see what spirit wants to talk about. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All righty. Um, give me a second. I just want to take a sip of my tea. So I have been drinking tea while I've been doing these morning coffee readings because I'm trying not to, to, to drink coffee on an empty stomach. And I'm recording these very early, like first thing in the morning, like before I even eat. So I'm having tea. But then I do make some coffee. So in case any of you were wondering... <laughs> All right, Tuesday, January 22nd, Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. I'm going to give you one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for the day. January 22nd, 2019. Here we go, guys. Tuesday, January 22nd. Ooh, what's that? Three of Wands. All right. Ooh, ooh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Page of Cups. Okay. Ooh. All righty. So here we go. Underneath the deck, we have, ooh, the Devil. All right, so we're still dealing with the devil here, guys. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else we have. Ah, we've got the five of cups. We've got the three of wands. We've got, wow, the five of pentacles. Seven of wands, page of cups, eight of wands. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is really interesting because um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of a personal story. Um, and it's really not even that big. Uh, whatever. Lately, um, uh, a spirit, a spirit communicates with music a lot for me. Always has. Um, and on my twin flame journey, because I am, I did, I have been on a bit of a twin flame journey. It's what led me to not only start reading cards for people, even though I had been studying it for a few years before I started reading uh, professionally. Um, it, the twin flame journey is what led me to even start this YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, that, I, 
obviously can't deny that. Um, but throughout the journey, music has been a big way of communicating. Um, and I'm, I, I've always loved music. You know, I've always wanted to be a musician. Um, I taught myself to produce music and all that good stuff. Um, I was a dancer as a kid. And so, um, m music has always been a big thing. And lately, I've been waking up with this one particular song in my head. Um, it is called Crocodile Tears by Grades. Check out my Facebook page. I'm going to post it so that you guys can hear it there. Um, again, it's at Divine Conversations 2711. Um, I'll put a link in the description box also for my Facebook page, but it's this song called Crocodile Tears, and it's like basically the hook is, um, well, it's basically saying, you know, telling, saying to someone, look, stop apologizing, stop crying. I mean, save the crocodile tears for someone who cares <laughs> because I am so sick of, um, please don't go. I'm, I'm so sick of, it. The crocodile tears. I'm so sick of, I need you so please don't leave me, this, that, and the other. And it's, it's like that. Um, and it's like, look, it's not even like <laughs> the person is saying, look, I'm not even mad. I'm just so sick of this. And for Twin Flames, that is a thing. And the funny thing about this is I woke up this morning and immediately the song started playing in my head and it's like I'm not even I'm not even in a bad mood. I don't understand why and I've been asking, please can you like can you play a different song because this just this is not a vibration I want to be in. Um, if you are a twin flame, many of you may have been hearing a lot of telepathic apologies. I know I was for quite a while. Um, it did subside a little bit, but then recently, right before the full moon, it resurged and a lot of the tele telepathic messages I have been getting from the Divine Masculine have been a lot of the same things I had been hearing like last year when I was in the very, very thick of this whole twin flame thing and the uh, telepathy was really strong and I was getting all, having all kinds of, <coughs> excuse me, conversations with the Divine Masculine and all that stuff. Um, but it's come back, it's resurged again, and, you know, I guess, I guess that's the vibration that I'm putting out. Wow. Um, and so when I woke up this morning, I said to Spirit, okay, maybe if, I hope, I hope we can get some clarity on this, because I feel like it's not just me that's feeling this. I feel like this is a collective situation. Well, that was just a long-winded way of saying, yes, here it is. <laughs> so uh, I'm seeing two sides to the situation here, but both are caught up in the devil energy, okay? I see the divine masculine here with the five of cups, the five of pentacles, and the page of cups. I see the divine feminine here with the seven of wands, the three of wands, the eight of wands, okay? Um Let's start with the Divine Masculine. Five of Cups, Five of Pentacles. Feeling left out in the cold, rejected, not good enough. Five of Cups, regret, remorse, shame, defeat even, you could say. Page of Cups, I'm sorry. Divine Feminine, blocked, Seven of Wands. Now, the Divine Feminine might actually have been blocked by the Divine Masculine, but now she's the one that's blocking. And for the most part, this doesn't feel like it's from any, through any form of animosity any longer. Yes, the energies might have started by being angry, saying, well, if you're going to block me, I'm going to block you, or saying, I just want nothing to do with you, 
you're toxic, you're disgusting, you, you, you're, you, you're gross, I can't stand you, I hate you even. But it's changed from that. It's changed a good amount because a lot of the animosity has been dropped. Um, a lot of us, our perspective is changing and that's changing because of the balance between masculine and feminine energies within. Um, and that's also, that's happening on both ends between the mas divine masculine and the divine feminine. It is the rise of the divine feminine that is uh, causing or influencing the divine masculine to kind of feel this regret, this shame, um, this, uh, uh, which seems counterproductive because of the energy that the divine feminine brings. Um, it's an unconditionally loving energy. It is, you know, a, a mother type energy. Um, but the divine masculine is having to face these energies. It's basically, even though it didn't come out here, and we'll see if it comes out with the clarifiers, but I'm kind of feeling or seeing a seven of pentacles energy, which is the, the card that represents you reap what you've sown, okay? So, um, and I did, it was one of the live readings that I did uh, last week on Instagram um, in which, you know, the divine masculine energies were channeled through that. It was not my intention to do a divine masculine, divine feminine, or like a twin flame reading, but that's just what came out at the time. Um, but the, it came out through the four of cups, whereas the divine masculine, even though it wasn't the five of cups, I still heard the first thing I heard with that card, the four of cups in that live reading was shame or regret. And now that I look back on it, it does make sense because that the Four of Cups does talk about, can talk about a missed opportunity. And for the most part, a lot of divine masculines really missed out on a big opportunity. Um, and that's, I'm not even saying that to, to, to make you feel any more shame, divine masculine, but um, that's all part of the process. So that's why I'm saying with the rise of the divine feminine, the divine masculine or those on the in the divine masculine side of the equation are starting to feel this five of cups this this regret the shame the remorse the five of pentacles the the um the lack the destitution feeling left out in the cold feeling rejected not feeling good enough um, and are feeling somewhat apologetic well not somewhat apologetic really apologetic okay um I just heard the divine masculine say, I just can't stop saying I'm sorry. There's nothing else that I can do. All I can do is just say I'm sorry right now. All right, but for the divine feminine, you have the seven of wands, the three of wands, the eight of wands, lots of wands. And see, it's funny because the divine feminine or those in the divine feminine camp have gone through a shit storm, have gone through a ton, a ton, a ton of crap. And at this point, we're just trying to move on with our lives. We're and even if that does mean moving on and reconnecting with the divine masculine, for many cases, that's fine. We just want to move forward. Uh, uh, but of course, there is an element of releasing any sort of expectation or any sort of requirements. Um, and that's what's going on here with the Three of Wands. The Divine, this is, uh, uh, the Three of Wands is talking about the Divine Feminine or those in the Divine Feminine camp aligning with that which they truly desire and just allowing the universe to bring it in. Continuing to do the work, but allowing the universe to bring it in. Okay, there's an, uh, not only is this having already put uh, time and effort and energy into something and then waiting for the return on that investment but This is also an energy of continuing to invest continuing to keep the momentum rolling Okay, and that's what the divine feminine is doing right now and the divine feminine is moving is moving really quickly She's holding the bullshit She's holding the bullshit at bay with the seven of wands. She's just blocking the bullshit and she's moving forward with the eight of wands and it's almost as if the divine masculine can't keep up or feels like he can't keep up. We do have the devil here. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was a really weird sound that just came from the street. <laughs> anyway, you probably didn't hear it, but anyway. But it happened right as I was speaking of the devil. 
It was, it was a really creepy sound, you guys. I'm not going to lie. But the devil is here. Still. And you know what? The devil is always going to be around. The devil is fear. The devil is <clears throat> codependency. Oh. There's another video that I want to share with you guys. It's from the Divine Masculine. Many of you follow him. Um, an energy talking about how codependency is leaving the Twin Flame Collective finally. And I watched it and it's really great. I'm going to share it on my Facebook page as well. But why is the devil here, guys? It's a very good question. It's a deep question, says Spirit. The devil is still affecting this Twin Flame situation. No, this is not intended to be a Twin Flame message, but that's what's coming through here today, guys. So there you have it. Um, I'm sorry, what I mean is this is not intended to be a Twin Flame series. Morning coffee is for everybody. Not just Twin Flames, but we're talking Twin Flames today, kids. The devil. Fear, shame, regret, remorse, very much all of those Five of Pentacles, Five of Cups energies. Now, the Divine Feminine isn't so affected by it, but, she, but Spirit is saying she is affected by it by default. So she's indirectly affected by it because she has done so much work, has come so far, and has been under attack by the devil. I mean, we both have, both mas masculine and feminine in different ways, but... Um, the Divine Feminine has been under psychic attack by the devil her damn near her whole life. I know I have. So, um, this ain't nothing new for her. But for the Divine Masculine, this is something new. Because many of, it, of them, or many of, excuse me, many of you in the Divine Masculine Collective, for those of you who are watching, have been under the influence of the devil your whole lives and you haven't known it. You couldn't see it. And what's being pointed out to me specifically is for some of you, it's your fathers. You grew up idolizing your father, which is, uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is normal, especially for a young man or those with that embodied masculine energies. You are going, you are most likely going to idolize the masculine figures in your life, whether they're, ma whether they're men or women and whether you're a man or a woman. And those of us in the feminine camp idolized the feminine figures in our lives. But the devil has been hiding in those masculine figures. The feminine saw it. The feminine saw it first, especially as a child. But we couldn't do anything about it because we were children. And now we're adults. And we're not taking it. Seven of Wands. Three of Wands, Eight of Wands. We're setting our own path. We're blocking out all the bullshit. And we're moving forward. We're moving forward towards our, our, our targets. We're moving forward in communicating with others, building new relationships, seeking out new relationships that benefit us, that are more in the vibration <clears throat> uh, that resonates more with our highest vibration. The Divine Masculine is still dealing with separating from the devil. And so the Divine Feminine is indirectly or, or affected by that because the Divine Feminine would like to be with her counterpart, the Divine Masculine. But there is a little bit of tough love here. This song that I'm hearing that I'm going to post on my Facebook page by Grades, Crocodile Tears. So sick of please don't go. I've had enough of us, us. So sick of need you so. I've had enough of us, us. Why don't you turn off the crocodile tears? <laughs> Honestly, save them for someone who cares. And it's not even like we're angry. It's just like, buddy, just stop. I get it. We get it. You're sorry. We know you messed up. We messed up too. 
we have things to be apologized for also, Divine Masculine, but we still did the work. So stop apologizing and do the work. And it stings, it, it like stings me just to say that, but it's true. It's one, it would be one thing if the Divine Masculine were coming forward to us face to face in the physical world and saying, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for how I acted. Many of us, those of you that are really resonating with me, that are really like you and those of us that are like really vibing, most likely, I mean, I know I would, would look right back at the divine masculine, look him dead in his eye and say, I'm sorry too. But that's not happening. What's happening is we're getting all, and it, it's, oh God, see, this is so perfect. Thank you so much, spirit. I'm so glad because I was really hoping that this would come out today because I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But it's, it, it, it's even, what we're getting are these crocodile tears. We're getting incessant apologies. We're being bombarded by it. But it's not even a mature situation. It's the fucking page. <laughs> it's not even the knight. It's not even the queen. And it's definitely, it's damn sure not the king or the queen. It's a motherfucking page, y'all. And at this point, I know I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sick of it. Because honestly, it, it only serves to help push at this point. And I'm speaking personally. I don't know about y'all. And this might be yours too. You might be like this for you too. But it only serves to help push me towards a lower vibration. So that is most likely devil energy right there. Now, I'm working hard not to let it. I'm trying to remain open and, and receptive and flow love. Not, not trying to like send healing or anything, but be open and loving towards him. Be like, look, I'm sorry too. It's totally okay. You know, we can get through this, blah, blah, blah. But also I'm sick of it. Sick of it. Okay. So we're going to get into the oracle section, not the oracle section, I'm sorry. We're going to get into the clarification right now. And with this clarification, I want help. Um, not just clarification, but advice. How do we handle this for both divine masculine and divine feminine? We're going to start with the divine masculine. Advice for the divine masculine in moving forward. One more shuffle. Advice for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine moving forward because we're still being plagued by this devil energy. And I say still, but it's, it's not even like you're ever really going to be free from it. It's just going to be easier to keep it at bay. Um, the devil, I mean, as long as we're here in the three-dimensional world, the devil is always going to have a place where they're going to, he's going to act from and try and bring us down. It's not until we get we cross over into the fifth dimensional efficiently, and I don't. That's not necessarily going to happen in this lifetime, but it's not until we cross over into that fifth dimensional reality where the devil really can't touch us. So, this is what we signed up for, kids. <laughs> okay. So, starting with the divine masculine, please, spirit, some advice on for the, what the divine masculine do, can do to um, heal from this to move forward. Advice for the Divine Masculine, please, with the Five of Pentacles, Five of Cups, Page of Cups. Advice for the Divine Masculine, please. Huh, gee, look at that. The one and only card that came out, the Ten of Wands, in reverse. <laughs> Underneath the deck is... Good Lord. Underneath the deck is the Two of Cups. All right, Divine Masculine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to spell it out for those of y'all that are not necessarily familiar with the Tarot. The Ten of Cups is about, and I'm sorry, wow. Well, did you hear that, guys? I didn't mean to say that, but I did at the same time. I said the Ten of Cups. We're not talking about the Ten of Cups. We're talking about the Ten of Wands. Now, the Ten of Cups is that ultimate fulfillment. 
that family. In this deck, the Crystal Visions deck, it is depicted as a, a, a masculine figure, a feminine figure, and a child. So mother, father, child. And I've also been saying that as, seeing that as the mother, the, the masculine, feminine, inner child dynamic within. Okay, it's the family. It's the ultimate um, emotional fulfillment. But that's not what we have here. We have the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is about burdens, obligations, needing to drop some shit, let some shit go. Came out in reverse. The Ten of Wands in reverse is about releasing the burdens, dropping it. Burdens that you most likely were never, never had any business carrying to begin with. This is carrying the burdens of other people. This is your family, your ancestry, taking on their roles, taking on their view in life. Now, that is natural. We learn from our families as a child, but as we grow into adults, we have the opportunity to become more and more authentic, which means leaving what they have chosen to carry behind. But see, many of us feel obligated to take that on. That is not our responsibility. And we've all been going through a period lately where we have been purging and healing from and cleansing ancestral karmic baggage. So, Divine Masculine, your advice with dealing with all of this, feeling left out in the cold, feeling rejected, feeling shame, regret, remorse, sorrow, mourning the loss of something, feeling apologetic, wanting to apologize in some way. Your advice for dealing with these energies? Release the toxic burdens, says spirit. And focus on the union within, two of cups. The union within, focusing on the union within, um, this is also a representation of your relationship with your divine feminine um, in the physical. So the divine feminine aspect, the, the version of the divine feminine that is external to you, that is here in this physical realm, this other person in your life, or that wants to be a part of your life, that you want to be a part of your life also. It, it, um, in focusing on the relationship within, the relationship between the masculine and feminine within and healing that bond and bringing that situation into union within, you facilitate the union with your divine feminine in the external. But in order for you to do that, you have to release the burdens that keep you from being authentic because you can't have this union, excuse me, you can't have this union within if you're being inauthentic. That is a primary, says, block, says spirit, that is a primary blockage towards your, your internal union in authenticity, okay? And the Ten of Wands here represents that inauthenticity to a T because you're carrying other people's burdens that you have no business carrying yourself. They've made their choices. That doesn't mean you have to make the same choices, all right? Wow, okay, Divine Feminine, advice for you. How to deal with this, with your Seven of Wands, Three of Wands, good Lord, Eight of Wands, good Lord. Wow, the Tower, the Hierophant. One more, actually two more, because then we're gonna look underneath the deck. But there was another card that flipped over here. Is it the King of Pentacles? No, it's the Four of Pentacles, holy shit. Okay, underneath the deck is the Wheel of Fortune. All right, the first thing I'm getting with the Wheel of Fortune is you just have to let this, you just have to let the wheel spin. It's almost like a game of chance. Wow. And that's exactly what this situation feels like. It's basically a game of roulette. I mean, you're prepared. You've done, you've done a lot of work to prepare yourself for this situation. And you just kind of have to leave it up to chance because there is no guarantee. There really is no guarantee for anything. And that's a hard lesson to learn. 
but you can create your own destiny. Now, you can create your own destiny in you're preparing for a relationship. You're doing the work that you need to do to prepare for a relationship, but that doesn't mean it's going to come through with the person that you might be desiring or you might be thinking it is going to come through uh, come with. Come through through. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm hearing Russian roulette in a sense, although we're not we're not playing <laughs> Okay, so maybe not Russian roulette, but um like gambling roulette like you know the uh, the Vegas game, but whatever. Okay. Whew. Um there's another card underneath the Wheel of Fortune that wants to come out. What is that? Ah, look at that, the Ten of Swords. All right, so in a sense, um, Divine Feminine, you've reached the, the end. And for many of you, you've already brought this to completion. And that's why the Wheel of Fortune is here on top of that, because now you're basically like, all right, universe, I've done what I needed to do. Now what? And so that's where kind of like the, the gamble comes into play, the roulette comes into play. Now, we have the Tower, the Hierophant, and the Four of Pentacles here. And this is almost like a, a message for the Divine Masculine, in a sense. Because the Divine Feminine, like, the, like I said, Divine Feminine, you've already worked through a lot of this already. And what I'm seeing in the wands suit between the seven of wands, the three of wands, and the eight of wands, it's like you are way past this point. You've been through your tower moment in seeing how the status quo is only harming people in a sense. I mean, sure, it's still doing a good amount of good. Kinda. But for the most part, it's just a bunch of dogma and bullshit. And we've let go of that, Four of Pentacles. We let go of it. But advice, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull to see if I just don't feel. Honestly, I just feel like most of us, most of you, Divine Feminines, we're already here. It's not even I, it's not even a question of me being able to look at it from a different point of view and say, if you're not quite here yet. No, we're already here. Seven of Wands, blockage, boundaries. It's not even just blockage. It started as a hard blockage. Like a, 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 it might have been a petty little thing. But I don't even want to say I don't even want to say it was that petty. Because even for me, when I started putting boundaries and like started making certain things private like my so my personal social media and things like that and I stopped talking so much about things and I just I clammed up a little bit sure a little bit was like well whatever you're gonna block me so I'll block you you piece of shit but it wasn't even about that because that what really caused me to start putting boundaries or blockages in place was the fact that I was starting to respect myself on a much greater level and yes it was like okay well if i if you can't if i can't see what you're if, if you're gonna block me yeah all right fine i'm gonna respect myself enough to say whoa no 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 i'm not gonna give you access to my shit and sure you could say that's a little bit petty but it's also a bit of self-respect and then it grew to where it was like okay no i need to stay to myself i need to keep like um and i'm not even blocking everybody but you know, if you're a friend of mine, you can see it. But if we're not connected, if you're not trying to communicate with me, then you don't get to see what all my friends see. You're not my friend. Please excuse a pause, guys. I'm just trying to pick out, see what else is there. But I just feel like this is also a message for the Divine Masculine, the Tower, the Hierophant, and the Four of Pentacles. If you want to get to this free and clear space, you have to let go of the, of the dogma, of the status quo. I mean, the Divine Feminine didn't get to where she is without a Tower moment. And it's not even like it was just one Tower moment. It was multiple Tower moments. 
over the course of years, says Spirit. And so the Ten of Swords, look, 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 you guys, I just realized this too. This is another 10-10. The Wheel of Fortune is a 10. And the Ten of Swords is a 10. Completion. The Divine Feminine has completed the, set, the situation for herself, or himself, in my case at least. And is allowing the universe to lead them, we'll say, to the next phase. Is open and ready for love and commitment, but in a true form, in a true sense, from a balanced and healthy situation. And so she's allowing the universe to guide her to it. But the divine masculine is still stuck here with the 10 of wands, needing to release this, blocked even. It, for some of you, this feels like this is like cemented into your reality, which is really just an illusion, just the work of the devil here. But you, Divine Masculine, also got the Two of Cups underneath your deck, or underneath, yeah, underneath the deck for you, and that's about divine union with masculine and feminine within. And the only way, the only way, you are going to find that union with your divine feminine in the physical realm is if you have that union within. Now, for some define, okay, what's underneath the devil here? Ah, the page of swords. Whatever. <laughs> For some of you, the divine feminine are being affected by the devil in the sense that it's almost as if they're being blocked from some new relationship. I've been wondering about that lately, myself. Whatever, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> okay, we're going to get into the uh, Oracle Guidance now. And you know what? I want to go back to the unicorns here. Mm, no. All right, we're going to start with, okay, we're going to start with the Animal Spirit Guides, and then we're going to end, we're going to close with the unicorns, okay? All right, you guys. Best messages, please, Spirit, for the collective in regards to this crap. <laughs> in regards to this shit. Best message, please, Spirit. There we go. Get out. J Stop it, Spirit. Und wow. Underneath the deck is Cobra. I just... Oh. Oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm floored. I mean, I really shouldn't be so surprised. I really shouldn't, okay? I've been doing this for at least for over a year now, and I've got, I've been dealing with some crazy synchronicities for years, okay? But this one, this one just takes the motherfucking cake, y'all, all right? Uh, are you seeing this? The card that came out is Crocodile. Why don't you turn off the crocodile tears? Honestly, save them for someone who cares. Good Lord. Y'all need to listen to that song. I'm going to post it on my Facebook page. You need to listen to that song. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. I want to start with Cobra first, since that's underneath the deck. Um, and actually, that's a really... Fire and water, by the way. Because crocodile is water, cobra is fire. But yeah, we're definitely, we're starting with cobra here. Okay. And actually, these energies are, these cards are very similar. We'll see. Look, listen, ready? Cobra, pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. 
The cobra hovers and watches, ever present, ever protecting, ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests externally in those special guides who've led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you, re what are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, Cobra is a student of life, humble and wise. When out of balance, Cobra is a know-it-all and is egocentric. To bring into balance, one must take a class or study, okay? And then we have, <laughs> I can't believe it. We have Crocodile, good God. Good, I mean, I Wow. Thank you, Spirit. I mean, that's so freaking awesome. Here, okay, I found it, finally. All right, here we go. Crocodile. Resting, submerging, collecting energy, cooling off. The crocodile reminds us to take a step back from the external world and turn inward. Now is not the time for decisions, action, or discussion. The crocodile's mantra is, wait. This doesn't mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear. So if there, so this is mainly for the divine masculine. If you're waiting around for shit to just blow over, thinking that, oh, well, I'll give it enough time and I can just come back in and it'll be like nothing ever happened, bullshit. It might be like that at first because the feminine might be so happy and excited to see you and just like not want to go back into the past in that moment, but if you two are going to have a relationship, you're gonna need to hash some shit out. You're going to need to clear some air. And it doesn't have to be extreme divine feminine. It doesn't have to be this crazy thing. It's just like there are some things that need to be discussed because none of us on the divine feminine collective are trying to recreate the past. None of us. We will walk before we ever deal with anything like that again like we have already. This does not mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear. The crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, gathering our awareness, observing, and building our energy, filling up the vital reserves so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. I just saw two, two, two. When in balance, crocodile is wise, patient, and a silent powerhouse. When out of balance, crocodile feels stuck and lashes out. To bring into balance, one must rest or practice the Makarasana pose, which is the crocodile pose, I believe. So there are some in the Divine Masculine Collective out there that are absolutely doing just that. Biding their time, collecting their energy, waiting for the time to strike, in a sense which makes sense as to why the Page of Swords is underneath the devil. Now, for some of you, the Page of Swords is underneath the devil. You're watching <coughs> from a distance because of fear, regret, shame, codependency. But others of you are waiting in the wings and watching that. Actually, that Page of Swords there is so perfect because you're trying to figure out how to move forward trying to figure out how, how to come correct, how to come clean, okay? All right. Archangel Michael, <laughs> he's a welcome sight right now. All right. So, closing message from the unicorns. Closing message from the unicorns. All right, best message, please, spirit. Um, and this, I guess, more advice. Please, for the collective. Whoa. I knew it. Anger. Oh, underneath the deck is abundance. Enjoy the bounty of life. Your supply is unlimited. Blessings are coming to you. And your final message, anger. Safely express your anger. Use anger as a positive force. Honor all your emotions as sacred. Most, that mostly goes out to the divine masculine because the divine feminine has already kind of learned how to do this 
or has been in the process of learning how to do this for some time. And also it's easier for the divine feminine because it's easier, we're more prone to accepting and dealing with our emotions. The divine masculine is really trying to learn that right now. But for all of us, take the anger, animosity that you're feeling, whatever you're feeling, channel it into propelling you forward in your life, okay? towards bigger, better, greater things. Use it as um, fuel to propel you into a higher vibration. Safely express your anger. Honor all of your emotions. Feel everything. Do not push anything away. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day. Um, I'm not going to be doing ha uh, happy hour tonight either because I have some readings, personal readings that I want to do, and I want to continue working on the um, monthly readings for February. And I didn't do any work yesterday, um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it today. So I have some personal readings to do tonight, and I'm going to be working on the February readings. But I am planning on doing happy hour tomorrow. Yes? Um, that's tentative, but I will keep you guys posted. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore, underscore conversations. You can also give me a like, connect with me on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. Please go ahead and check out my, my Facebook page because I'm going to post this Crocodile Tears song and the video from the Divine Masculine about um, uh, codependency leaving the Twin Flame Collective, which I thought was so spot on. Um, at least it resonated with me. And yeah, I love you guys. <laughs> Have a great day. And I, I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah, take care. Bye.